Amyloid, Wikipedia article audio. Amyloids are aggregates of proteins that become folded into a shape that allows many copies of that protein to stick together forming fibrils. In the human body, amyloids have been linked to the development of various diseases. Pathogenic amyloids form when previously healthy proteins lose their normal physiological functions and form fibrous deposits in plagues around cells which can disrupt the healthy function of tissues and organs. Such amyloids have been associated with more than 50 human diseases, known as amyloidosis, and may play a role in some neurodegenerative disorders. Some amyloid proteins are infectious, these are called prions in which the infectious form can act as a template to convert other non-infectious proteins into infectious form. Amyloids may also have normal biological functions, for example, in the formation of fimbriae in some genera of bacteria, transmission of epigenetic traits in fungi as well as pigment deposition and hormone release in humans. Definition Diseases featuring amyloids Amyloids have been known to arise from many different proteins and polypeptides. These polypeptide chains generally form beta sheet structures that aggregate into long fibers, however, Identical polypeptides can fold into multiple distinct amyloid conformations. The diversity of the conformations may have led to different forms of the prion diseases. The name amyloid comes from the early mistaken identification by Rudolf Fierko of the substance as starch, based on crude iodine staining techniques. For a period, the scientific community debated whether or not amyloid deposits are fatty deposits or carbohydrate deposits until it was finally found that they are, in fact, deposits of albumoid proteinaceous material. The remainder of this article will use the biophysical context. The International Society of Amyloidosis classifies amyloid fibrils based upon associated proteins. Amyloid deposits occur in the pancreas of patients with diabetes mellitus, although it is not known if this is functionally important. The major component of pancreatic amyloid is a 37-amino acid residue peptide known as islet amyloid polypeptide or amylin. This is stored with insulin in secretory granules in B cells and is CO secreted with insulin. Non-disease and functional amyloids ATTR amyloid deposits from transthyretin occur not only in transthyretin-related hereditary amyloidosis, but also in advanced cases of aging in many tissues, in many mammalian species. They are a common result in supercentenarian autopsies. A proposal is that they may mediate some tissue pathologists seen in advanced aging, and pose a limit to human lifespan. Amyloids are formed of long unbranched fibers that are characterized by a cross beta sheet quaternary structure in which parallel chains of beta stranded peptides are arranged in an orientation perpendicular to the axis of the fiber. Each individual fiber may be 515 nanometers in width and a few micrometers in length. While amyloid is usually identified using fluorescent dyes, stain polarimetry, circular dichroism, or FTIR, the gold standard test to see whether a structure contains cross beta fibers is by placing a sample in an X ray diffraction beam. The term cross beta was based on the observation of two sets of diffraction lines, one longitudinal and one transverse, that form a characteristic cross pattern. There are two characteristic scattering diffraction signals produced at 4.7 and 10 angstroms, corresponding to the interstrand and stacking distances in beta sheets. The stacks of beta sheet are short and traverse the breadth of the amyloid fibril, the length of the amyloid fibril is built by aligned strands. 
the cross beta pattern is considered a diagnostic hallmark of amyloid structure. Amyloid Biophysics For a long time our knowledge of the atomic level structure of amyloid fibrils was limited by the fact that they are unsuitable for the most traditional methods for studying protein structures. Recent years have seen progress in experimental methods that now enable direct data on the internal structure of different types of amyloid fibrils. Two prominent methods include the use of solid-state NMR spectroscopy and electron microscopy. Combined, these methods have provided 3D atomic structures of amyloid fibrils formed by amyloid beta-peptides, alpha-synuclein, tau, and the FUS protein, associated with various neurodegenerative diseases. X-ray diffraction studies of microcrystals revealed atomistic details of core region of amyloid. The crystallographic structures show that short stretches from amyloid-prone regions of amyloidogenic proteins run perpendicular to the filament axis, consistent with the cross-beta feature of amyloid structure. They also reveal a number of characteristics of amyloid structures neighboring beta sheets are tightly packed together via an interface devoid of water, with the opposing beta strands slightly offset from each other such that their side chains interdigitate. This compact dehydrated interface created was termed a steric zipper interface. There are eight theoretical classes of steric zipper interfaces dictated by the directionality of the beta sheets and symmetry between adjacent beta sheets. A variety of tertiary structures have been observed in amyloid. The beta sheets may form a beta sandwich, or a beta solenoid which may be either beta helix or beta roll. Identical polypeptides can fold into multiple distinct amyloid conformations. Structure Amyloid is formed through the polymerization of hundreds to thousands of monomeric peptides into long fibers. In general, amyloid polymerization is sequence sensitive, that is, causing mutations in the sequence can prevent self-assembly, especially if the mutation is a beta sheet breaker, such as proline or non-coated alpha aminoisobutyric acid. For example, Humans produce amylin, an amyloidogenic peptide associated with type 2 diabetes, but in rats and mice prolines are substituted in critical locations and amyloidogenesis does not occur. Studies comparing synthetic to recombinant amyloid beta 1 to 42 in assays measuring rate of fibrillation, fibril homogeneity, and cellular toxicity showed that recombinant amyloid beta 1 to 42 has a faster fibrillation rate and greater toxicity than synthetic amyloid beta 1 to 42 peptide. This observation combined with the irreproducibility of certain amyloid beta 1 to 42 experimental studies has been suggested to be responsible for the lack of progress in Alzheimer's research. Consequently, there have been renewed efforts to manufacture amyloid beta 1 to 42 and other amyloid peptides at unprecedented purity. Formation there are multiple classes of amyloid forming polypeptide sequences. Glutamine rich polypeptides are important in the amyloidogenesis of yeast and mammalian prions, as well as trinucleotide repeat disorders, including Huntington's disease. When glutamine rich polypeptides are in a beta sheet conformation, Glutamines can brace the structure by forming interstrand hydrogen bonding between its amide carbonyls and nitrogens of both the backbone and side chains. The onset age for Huntington's disease shows an inverse correlation with the length of the polyglutamine sequence, with analogous findings in AC Elegans model system with engineered polyglutamine peptides. Amyloid pathology other polypeptides and proteins such as amylin and the Alzheimer's beta protein do not have a simple consensus sequence and are thought to operate by hydrophobic association. 
Among the hydrophobic residues, aromatic amino acids are found to have the highest amyloidogenic propensity. For these peptides, cross-polymerization is observed in vitro and possibly in vivo. This phenomenon is important, since it would explain interspecies prion propagation and differential rates of prion propagation, as well as a statistical link between Alzheimer's and type 2 diabetes. In general, the more similar the peptide sequence the more efficient cross-polymerization is, though entirely dissimilar sequences can cross-polymerize and highly similar sequences can even be blockers that prevent polymerization. Polypeptides will not cross-polymerize their mirror image counterparts, indicating that the phenomenon involves specific binding and recognition events. Histological staining The fast aggregation process Rapid conformational changes as well as solvent effects provide challenges in measuring monomeric and oligomeric amyloid peptide structures in solution. Theoretical and computational studies complement experiments and provide insights that are otherwise difficult to obtain using conventional experimental tools. Several groups have successfully studied the disordered structures of amyloid and reported random coil structures with specific structuring of monomeric and oligomeric amyloid as well as how genetics and oxidative stress impact the flexible structures of amyloid in solution. Oligomeric intermediates of insulin during fibrillation decreased the surface tension of solution which indicated to detergent-like properties of oligomers and significant role of hydrophobic forces in cytotoxicity of oligomers. The reasons for amyloid association disease are unclear. In some cases, the deposits physically disrupt tissue architecture suggesting disruption of function by some bulk process. An emerging consensus implicates prefibrillar intermediates rather than mature amyloid fibers in causing cell death. Calcium dysregulation has been observed in cells exposed to amyloid oligomers. These small aggregates can form ion channels planar lipid bilayer membranes. Channel formation has been hypothesized to account for calcium dysregulation and mitochondrial dysfunction by allowing indiscriminate leakage of ions across cell membranes. Studies have shown that amyloid deposition is associated with mitochondrial dysfunction and a resulting generation of reactive oxygen species, which can initiate a signaling pathway leading to apoptosis. There are reports that indicate amyloid polymers can induce the polymerization of essential amyloidogenic proteins, which should be deleterious to cells. Also, interaction partners of these essential proteins can also be sequestered. In the clinical setting, amyloid diseases are typically identified by a change in the fluorescence intensity of planar aromatic dyes such as thioflavin T, Congo Red, or NIAD4. In general, this is attributed to the environmental change, as these dyes intercalate between beta strands to confine their structure. Congo Red positivity remains the gold standard for diagnosis of amyloidosis. In general, binding of Congo red to amyloid plagues produces a typical apple green birefringence when viewed under cross polarized light. Recently, significant enhancement of fluorescence quantum yield of NIAD4 was exploited to super resolution fluorescence imaging of amyloid fibrils and oligomers. To avoid nonspecific staining, other histology stains, such as the hematoxylin and eosin stain, are used to quench the dye's activity in other places such as the nucleus, where the dye might bind. Modern antibody technology and immunohistochemistry has made specific staining easier, but often this can cause trouble because epitopes can be concealed in the amyloid fold, in general. An amyloid protein structure is a different conformation from the one that the antibody recognizes. <laughs>